Hey, I'm Renee, but you can call me Blade, and this is the Oh My God Show, and today we are going through the Bible, and we are in the book of Exodus. Now, the Bible is divided into two parts, the Old Testament and the New Testament. It has a total of 66 books. Now, each book is divided into chapters and verses. The Bible has the ability to change your life because for sure, it has changed mine. So let's get right into it. We are at Exodus uh, chapter 17 and we are basically going through the various challenges uh, that the Israelites are going as they wander through the wilderness. We saw the Israelites already starting to complain as they go through the challenges. Let's see what's going to happen in chapter 17. Now the whole Israelite community set out from the desert of sin, traveling from place to place as the Lord commanded. They camped at Rephidim, but there was no water for the people to drink. So they quarreled with Moses and said, give us water to drink. Moses replied, why do you quarrel with me? Why do you put the Lord to the test? But the people were thirsty for water there and they grumbled against Moses. They said, why did you bring us up out of Egypt to make us and our children and livestock die of thirst? Then Moses cried out to the Lord, what am I to do with these people? They are almost ready to stone me. Now, these people he's talking about are his people, the Hebrews, um, interchangeable. We call them the Israelites or the Hebrews. Now, Moses is already tired. They are basically, imagine you have almost over half a million, no, over half a million men, right? Excluding women and children. So imagine, right? Can you even imagine an auditorium, a normal school size auditorium in Jamaica or even a stadium, a football stadium or whatever? Can you imagine almost maybe a million people, basically, kids especially, women. You know how some women can be so nagging? Like women, children, men, old, young, middle-aged, behind you basically quarreling, complaining. You are basically wandering around in a desert. You have to find food and water and everything for these people god has done so many miracles for them but every time when they find another hurdle they start attacking uh, verbally attacking moses and sometimes moses and aaron as we saw in chapter 16 and moses is really really saying to god i don't know what to do with these people because i'm sure when god told moses to go and save these people he didn't tell them that they were going to be ungrateful that they were going to be disgusted at him at times that they were going to be complaining 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 as they walk around this desert for so many um, years and they're just walking behind him complaining and each time there's a miracle that brings them food or water or whatever it is they literally forget in the next moment that they come upon another hurdle and Moses like maybe any of us would be in his situation is frustrated is frustrated now in verse 5 um, the Lord answered Moses go out in front of the people take with you some of the elders of Israel and take in your hand the staff which you struck the Nile and go um, with which you struck the Nile and go. I will stand there before you by the rock at Oreb. Strike the rock and water will come out of it for the people to drink. So Moses did this in the sight of the elders of Israel and he called the place Massa and Meribah because the Israelites quarreled and because they tested the Lord saying, is the Lord among us or not? At this point, you're getting to the point where you're saying you don't know what else God needs to do to these people or for these people for them to really believe him and trust him. They're just literally there for the bread and fish, so to speak, like they're just there um, and they have no internal, I think, faith. They're just looking at what they can see with their eyes. If they, if they don't see something in front of their eyes, they won't, it's like they, don't, they won't believe it. No, whatever God did yesterday is always in yesterday. Like um, sometimes uh, for me personally, when I go through a challenge or a struggle, most of the time, the thing that keeps me going is God's track record in my life. So I get really down sometimes or stressed or whatever, but I always remember that if God did that, that time, you know, God did that. And I think for you as well, you do that like, okay, I am stressed now, but God provided before and he can do it again. But for them, it was almost like what he did yesterday. We're still not sure about what he's going to do tomorrow. And I think it's also the nature of human beings. And that's how most of us are. I am like that at times. If I catch myself, I will preach myself out of like a, a certain mood or a vibe. But you get into that, that mental loop of what's going to happen now. Now in verse eight, the, Amalek, the Amalekites came and attacked the Israelites at Rephidim. 
Rephidim, Moses said to Joshua, Choose some of our men and go out to fight the Amalekites. Tomorrow I will stand on top of the hill with the staff of God in my hand. So now they are literally facing war because they're just going and you know through this wilderness. Imagine how they were upset when they didn't get food. Imagine how they're gonna feel now that they're literally physically being attacked by these people. So Joshua fought the Amal Amalekites as Moses had ordered, and Moses Aaron and, and her went to the top of the hill. So they are fighting like in this valley. And Moses and Aaron and this other guy is there like watching and can see everything that's going on. As long as Moses held up his hands, the Israelites were, win were winning. But whenever he lowered his hands, the Amalekites were winning. When Moses' hands, when Moses' hands grew tired, they took a stone and put it under him and he sat on it. Aaron and her held up his hands, one on one side and one on the other, so that his hands remained steady till sunset. So literally they had to hold his hand up. He couldn't hold it up. And while this battle is, is going on, as long as God's presence was there, as long as Moses was being obedient, they were winning. Once the hand went down, they were losing. So they realized what was happening. And so they now have to be supported. Moses always needed to be supported in one way or the other. He always had help, but he was the one that God, um, basically like God's mouthpiece for the Hebrews. Aaron and her held his hand up, one on one side, one on the other, so that his hand remained steady till sunset. So Joshua overcame the Amalekite army with the sword. Joshua, as you will see further down, is known as a mighty warrior. Joshua, remember that name? Now Joshua was able to just fight these people. He had the bravery, he had the courage, he had the faith, but he was also supernaturally packed. One person can't just be fighting all these people, but he had the, the, the Lord with him and he had the courage to actually fight these people. Now in verse 14, then the Lord said to Moses, write this on a scroll as something to be remembered and make sure that Joshua hears it because I will completely blot out the name of Amalek from under heaven. Now remember that the Israelites are used as an uh, example um, for us to come. Now they are representing the people of God, right? So you do not come against the people of God because if you come against the people of God, you are coming against God. Now remember how some people are so loving and protective of their children. That's why when you have parents who don't love their children, who don't care for their children, they're seen, uh, seen as uh, abnormal because it's almost natural instinct. Many parents, it's like they would die for their kids. They will take a bullet for their kids, right? So this is basically what's happening. Like you don't fight against God's people because if you fight against God's people, you are, you are literally starting a fight with God because it is his duty to protect his people. So basically God is going to wipe them out. So the the whole uh, nation of them because they dared to fight his people. Now you see God was still protecting the Israelites as if they were innocent babies who never did any wrong, who never complained, who never showed him any form of ungratitude. He was protecting them after all this complaining basically. They are making a mockery of the efforts that God has made to save them to this day. Like they are making a mockery of God's, um, what do you call it? The, the things that God has done for them, they're mocking it. They're complaining. They're walking around behind Moses with their kids and just complaining. They don't want this. They don't want that, whatever. One time they were complaining for they want meat and whatever, you know. And even with all the things that they were doing, they were by no means perfect. Maybe even you yourself have a better relationship with God, even though God has never parted any Red Sea for you, right? But these people, but God still you still don't uh, mess with God's children. They're still his children even when they mess up. They are still his children when, when, when they were not being lovely. And God still fought for them again because he promised their ancestors. He promised Abraham that he was going to make a great nation after, uh, um, you know, through his bloodline. And irrespective of what they did, God, he is God enough. I cannot say man enough. God is God enough to keep his words. Even when these people were not listening. Oh my gosh. Like I'm beginning a revelation right now about this. You know, God is still coming for us even when we are not coming for him. 
so to speak. Even when we are wayward, even when we mess up, God still goes out of his way to fight for us and he's using these people as example. And I'm sure you've seen it in your own life. And we really praise and magnify God because he's, he's, his mercy is really um, everlasting. Some things, you know, we would cut people off for less than this. You know, you help someone once and they show you that they're ungrateful. You will not help them again. Many of us, we will not. We will cut them off. We'll give them blue tick on WhatsApp. <laughs> they will not see us again. They will not hear us again. One time, sometimes. It only takes only one time for you to mess up with some of us. And we cut you off for good. And these people, they are, they are creating a reputation of being maybe not worth the effort that God has made to save them, but he still loves them and he still thinks that of them as um, his people to the point where he's going to cut off those people who try to fight against them. Now in verse 15, it says, Moses built an altar and called it, the Lord is my banner. In verse 16, he said, because hands were lifted up against the throne of the Lord, the Lord will be at war against the Amalekites from generation to generation. If this is not love, I don't know what love is. God is showing unconditional love to the uh, Israelites. He's showing unconditional love. He takes it personally even for someone to try to fight against his people. He will address their, their behavior, right? It's like your kid did something wrong. You're going to address your kid, right? But you don't want someone to come and kill them because they did something wrong. You're going to address their behavior, maybe in private or whatever. But you're not going to want to be happy to have the, the children's services come to take them, right? Even though you might say they're, they're rude or they did something wrong. And we see the same thing here where God is going to deal with them. I'm kind of giving you a hint, hint. But at the same time, he will not allow their enemies to laugh in their face or to defeat them. Thank you so much for watching. This is chapter 17. Now, uh, as, before I go as usual, a prayer for you. Father God, in the name of Jesus, you are awesome, God, whose mercy is everlasting, God. You have loved us so much, even when we are wrong, God, even in our sin and trespasses, oh God, even as we wander around the valley of sin of our life, oh God, you are still here for us. You are still here to fight our enemies, oh God. Father God, I thank you that you love us even when we are not lovable. Father God, I thank you that you love us even when we complain and murmur. Even when we embarrass you, oh God, before our enemies. Father God, you still decide to fight for us. Father God, in every challenge and circumstance that we find ourselves in today, God, I pray that your love, oh God, will transcend the boundaries of sin in our life, oh God. I pray that you will wake us up, oh God, to realize that you are a loving God who loves us no matter what and that we are indebted to you, O oh God, by living a good life before you, O oh God, by listening to your commandments, by being obedient to you, O oh God. Give us the strength to obey you even when we see that we are tempted, O oh God, to sin, tempted to trespass against you. Father God, anoint, O oh God, us afresh in the name of Jesus Christ. Father God, burn out every evil desires from our hearts, O oh God make us over father god do not let us die in our sins oh god forgive us of our sins and trespasses cover us unto your blood father god i thank you for the subscribers god i thank you for those watching i pray oh god that you will be merciful to them god that you will show them grace like how you show the israelites lord show them mercy god show them unconditional love show us unconditional love oh god let, let us walk in in your ways oh god father god we give our weaknesses to you oh god we give our weaknesses to you in the name of jesus christ so that the enemy will not be able to use them against us in jesus christ's name amen thank you so much for watching i am blade and i will see you next time bye i'm blade and i'm cutting <laughs>